We still haven't got the numbers yet, Pierre, but what are you expecting? Um, it's very difficult to say because you have like uh, several thousand cars uh, transiting between uh, the Model 3 factory in Fremont and Europe uh, and China. Um, so, so that gives me a very wide range. I expect uh, uh, deliveries between uh, 50,000 units, which would be very disappointing, and 65,000 units, which would be a very strong positive surprise. Uh, and, and that range is very similar to where consensus expectations are, uh, with a very wide, uh, very wide standard deviation across all uh, all my peers. So the difference between these two numbers is really. Uh, how much Tesla has been able to go through the initial ramp of deliveries of cars in, uh, uh, in Europe and to some extent in China. We know they did that extremely well over the summer in the US, but that was home. That was about taking employees to deliver cars to clients. Um, uh, that was epic. Uh, and they managed to deliver a very large number of cars in the very last weeks of the quarter. This time around, it's Europe. Um, there is like a, uh, uh, C transfer uh, involved, so it's uh, much uh, more uncertain. Now, Max, this as Elon Musk himself is supposed to be in a Manhattan court on Thursday to answer to these SEC contempt charges? Yeah, we're expecting arguments in, in, this, uh, in this case over the alleged, uh, the SEC says that, that Elon Musk uh, violated the terms of his settlement, um, which were, were kind of hammered out in the wake of the uh, famous you know, 420 tweet, where he had tweeted that he had the uh, funding to, to, to buy out the company at $420 a share. That turned out to be inaccurate, and we've, and we've gone down this whole road. Um, as, as we talked about before, it, it's hard to see how this ends because you know while the judge could just like you know toss Elon Musk out of Tesla, you, you don't really see that as being great for investors. Um, mo most investors, I think, even even bears would agree that that he's a better CEO than than the next guy. So so you know it's kind of this weird position to get though it is a, a source of uncertainty um, that's coming on top of the uncertainty uh, of the deliveries and the production numbers. And, and Pierre, you are one of the biggest bulls on the street. Does this latest kerfuffle between Musk and the SEC, I mean, it's, it's pretty unprecedented that he's going to be appearing in court, uh, we believe, on this very issue. Does this concern you? Well, not um, not that much. I think um, the, there is this aspect that like the, the SEC uh, uh, might uh, take uh, uh, wholeheartedly this uh, this issue, but they will remain very very reasonable, and they are not going to hurt the company. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of noise, it's going to be a lot of headlines, but at the end of the day, uh, Tesla uh, as a firm is not going to get hurt by that. The one thing that was slightly worrying me um, over the summer was, of course, the sanity of uh, of Elon Musk. He looked very tired, overreacting on anything, like tweeting this strange. 420, uh, 420 uh, uh, tweet. I think these things are behind us. La, the, the recent times I've seen him, he looks to be in very good shape, uh, very, very, um, uh, very stable, rested. Uh, I think he, he turns the corner. So I, I am, I am fairly reassured by that. And now the way I understand the situation is that la, la, he really accepted to settle with the SEC after the summer on advice by uh, very close uh, advisors and friends, but he did that against, uh, against his guts. He, he feels the SEC uh, is asking too much, and he feels uh, he has a right to a fight. So, 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 so that's a very, really a personal reaction, but I don't think it's, uh, it's hiding like a, a, a risky personal situation that could affect the company.